Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Lee Chekstep from Century 21 Canada, and we are here today launching our Be Relentless webinar series. Every day for the next 21 days, we will have a webinar here on Facebook Live at this time. We are thrilled to be launching it today with Rich Robbins, and we have exciting presenters lined up for the entire next month. So we hope that we will create a community here where you can come ask questions, learn something during this time of business unusual. Before we get started today, I do want to introduce Todd Chayak, the VP of Operations for Century 21 Canada. Todd, I will turn it over to you. Good morning. Good morning, Lee. Thank you. Uh, to all of you out there, uh, first and foremost, I hope you and your family are healthy and safe. Uh, I want you to know that at Century 21 Canada Head Office, our primary focus through this is to take care of people first, putting health and safety above all else. And while we've all been working from home for over a week, I can tell you with absolute certainty that our entire team is working harder than we ever have to ensure the C21 brokers and agents will get through this and come out of it stronger than ever before. I believe that if we all focus on what we can be doing to help our families, neighbors, and communities get through this, and that if we remain positive and provide leadership in the face of COVID-19, that we will see the light at the end of the tunnel sooner than most. And remember, we are very lucky in the real estate industry. You are all small business owners. Other small businesses will never get back the revenue that they are losing through this, be it restaurants, travel, tourism, and so many others. But many of the real estate transactions that would have taken place this spring will simply be delayed until this is over, but they will happen. People will need to buy and others will need to sell, and we want you to be there for them and get more than your fair share of that market. This is a temporary period of pain but that's all it is, it's temporary. And yes, these are challenging times, but that's why we need all C21ers to step up and be positive about where we will be when this is over and confidently offer help and leadership in your communities. Thank you all for being here. Now I have the distinct pleasure of introducing one of Canada's best trainers who knows more about leadership and what you need to get, what you need to be doing to succeed through this than almost anyone. Richard Robbins, over to you and welcome and thank you for being here. Todd, thank you, my friend. Uh, good to see you again. Great to see Lee. Uh, hello, everybody. As uh, some of you might know, maybe not all of you, I started my career with Century 21. So July 15th, 1985, Peterborough, Ontario is where I started. Um, so very, uh, very excited to be, to be with you all today. So I put together, uh, this program and really what it's about is staying positive and productive uh, during COVID-19. Now, Todd already said this, but we have to be very sympathetic right now to everything that's going on. And the number one thing we've all got to do is make sure that we do everything we can to stay healthy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through this. And when we finished, I'm open to your questions. Um, this is, uh, and I, this presentation, I don't take lightly. In other words, I was sitting down and I was thinking to myself, you know, people are asking me to present and what can I say that I truly think uh, is the right thing to do? So when I say I don't take this lightly, this is not a sales pitch. This is not meant to be crazy motivational. I'm hoping maybe it will a little bit. This is just what I think right now is the absolute right thing for us as an industry to do. Some of you might agree, some of you might disagree, I don't know. Whatever is okay, this is just what I feel is the right thing to do. So thank you for being with us. Uh, feel free to type in your questions and I will get to your questions at the end. So first number point, first point is this, I put, we all need to be part of the solution, not the problem. Obviously the number one responsibility that we all have right now is not to spread this virus. We all can see what's going on. And a lot of agents, our coaching members and many agents have been asking us, well, what should we be doing? Should we still be out there uh, showing homes? And which is, you know, a really good question because people just don't know what they should be doing right now. Bear with me. I'm just adjusting my screen a little bit here. Uh, 
There we go. Okay. So people just don't know what to do. And everybody's confused. There's tremendous uncertainty about what we're going to do today. And uncertainty is an interesting emotion because uncertainty breeds fear. When we're uncertain, we're in uncertain times, we tend to get scared. You know, we worry about our health, we worry about our finances, we worry about our customers, we definitely worry about our family. And all of this uncertainty causes us to get a little bit fearful and we don't always know exactly what to do. So here is my opinion for what it's worth to you is number one, should homes be going on the market right now? I think in some cases they probably have to. Now, again, you've got to conform with whatever the local rules are, but there's many people out there that have bought a house and because they bought a house, they have to sell theirs. Maybe it's in a really busy market and obviously they want to buy before they sell. And then there's other people that have sold their house and they need to buy. So I think you're going to find that there's circumstances right now where homes need to be going on the market or buyers need to be buying. However, I think what we got to do is we've got to adhere to very strict protocols. Uh, and what I mean by that is that we got to make sure that we're not putting anybody in harm's way if we're going to be listing a home for sale. So an example of that, if you list a home for sale today, I'm gonna to suggest that maybe the people who own the home, if it's not vacant, should not be living in that home while it's for sale. Now, I know this can be difficult, but it could be a suggestion that you wanna make. I do think it's probably advisable now to be doing virtual showings. Like, why is it that everybody needs to go see the house I would run match around to see everybody doing virtual showings right now. And then maybe if they like the house, maybe make an offer and they could make that conditional on maybe going and seeing the house physically or at least narrowing it down with virtual showings to maybe if they're looking at say four or five or six homes and what you do is you narrow it down and say, we're only gonna go see your top two. Obviously a lot of our coaching clients right now are doing open houses. And I still think it's a great time to do open houses. But to do open houses, they need to be virtual. You should not be doing public open house any way, shape, or form. If you are showing a property, or if you do have something listed for sale, there should be no piggyback showings, right? In other words, you should never have two people looking at a property at the same time. Now, what's interesting I'm finding right now, I actually had a number of calls this morning with people all across Canada and different markets and trying to figure out what is going on but you want to know some, there's still activity out there. There's still homes that are selling. There's still homes coming on the market. There's still buyers that bought a want buy. So I think what we got to do is we just got to make sure that if we're going to move that direction, we need to be very, very cautious and continue to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Now, some of you might say, well, I don't think we should be listing homes right now. And that's, that's okay. But understand that if the public wants to list their home, because they're under pressure to list their home, then they're going to list that home with somebody. Whether we think they should or they shouldn't, our job is still to serve the public. We owe our fiduciary duty to them, but we have to do it in a very, very responsible way. You know, I look at homes today, especially if they're empty, you know, you could leave all of the lights on 24 seven, you could leave all of the cupboards open, right? And that way people can walk through and we're calling it, you know, walking through with your hands in your pocket like I am right now, so nobody's touching anything. And maybe if you do that, you know, the only thing they might need to touch is maybe the banister if they're going up and down the stairs, which you could quickly sanitize right afterwards. But these are the type of protocols that you're gonna have to have in place. Um, there's a great tool, it's called iGuide. And I would strongly suggest uh, check out iGuide. Now there's, there's other tools as well. Uh, obviously we've got a lot of, you know, 3D right now, we got virtual tours, we got Matterport, iGuide, there's many of them out there you could use. And this is probably also an opportunity for us to get really good at certain technologies that maybe we're not as good as we could be at or technologies we've always been interested in learning, okay? So the first one is this, we need to all be fully responsible and we need to be part of the solution, not part of the problem and maybe talk to other people about being part of the solution, not part of the problem. The second one is this, in these times, I think we need to stop selling and we need to start helping. Now, here's what's interesting. I get a number of emails every day as you do from companies that are trying to sell me something. Now I will say that they, they have settled down a little bit. I'm not getting as many, but I'm telling you, I'm still getting some. 
And when I get an email right now from some company that hasn't changed their marketing approach, right? That is just doing what their original strategy was and they're trying to sell me something. I tell you, I just unsubscribe right away because I want nothing to do with a company that right now is out in the world trying to sell everybody something. I want everything to do with a company that is out there trying to help people right now. See, this is where we come together as one, whether we look at, we come together as Canadians, we come together as you know, people with Century 21, we come together as realtors, whatever the case is, this is when we need to come together as one. And what we've got to do is we've got to do it every, we can do anything we can do right now to help people. Now, there's something called being ethically opportunistic. And ethically opportunistic is where that doesn't mean that you might not do deals. I'm not saying when I say stop selling, okay, what I'm saying is there's only certain people that should probably be putting their homes in the market. There's only certain people that should be buying homes. So there's still opportunity there. Don't get me wrong. There's still opportunity, but it's ethical. You're doing it for the right reasons. You're not saying, hey, this is the time to be on the market. What a great opportunity we got. And I'm sure none of you would do that anyway. But when I say stop selling and start helping, what I'm talking about is this is where we can show our true colors. See, it is said that in the most difficult times, your character is not created, your character is revealed. So what's happening right now is we all have a brand. RRI, our company has a brand. Century 21 has a brand. You have a brand. And what's gonna happen right now is you're going to deepen your brand. People are going to find out who you really are right now. Now, by not doing anything, sitting back, ah, that's probably gonna have a neutral effect in your brand. But by stepping it up and saying, you wanna know something? I'm gonna go out into the world, and I'm gonna help, I'm gonna help, I'm gonna help. Even though I got all this stuff going on in my own world right now, I got the kids home from school, I'm worried about deals not closing, whatever is going on in your world, we all got that going on but we need even with that going on to stand up and help because that's what leadership is. See, leaders are the one that will get up there and they'll get out in the world and they'll do something about it, right? They're not sitting back waiting to see what's gonna happen. They're not watching Netflix all day. They're not watching CNN all day. No, they're getting up there and they're getting out into the world and they're going to do something. They're going to help. So you can help. What about this? What if you went to everybody in your database and what you do is you reach out to everybody in your database. So here's my recommendation right now to our coaching clients. I say, listen, if you have 400 people, 300 people, 100 people, 500 people in your database right now, these are people that you know, obviously, you have some form of relationship with. <clears throat> then take that database and over the next 30 days, now you're probably gonna work, say, let's say four weeks, 30 days, four weeks. You're gonna take a couple days off a week, which means you got five days in each week times four weeks, that's 20 days. Take the amount of people in your database, divide it by 20, and figure out how many calls you have to make every day to talk to everybody in your database. Now, when you phone them, you don't talk about real estate. Now, they might bring real estate up. That's okay. They bring real estate up. Talk about real estate. But do not bring it up yourself. See, we're going to help. We're not trying to sell right now. Now, here's what's going to happen, and I'll tell you what to say in the call in a minute. When you make this phone call, there's a few things going to happen. Number one, people are going to be excited to hear from you right now right? Because of what's going on. Everybody wants to talk to people. They want to know what they're thinking, what's happening, what's going on in the world. Number two, they're going to be really thankful you called. They're going to appreciate who you are for taking the time to reach out as you got many other things going on in your life as well. You're going to make them feel better and you're going to feel better. Now, why are you going to feel better? See, you're going to feel better because every time we do something with no intention, right? it makes us feel better. It's like holding the door open, buying a coffee for somebody. When you do that, the giver gets the most, right? And everybody goes, well, boy, that was nice of you to hold my door open. And you made them feel good, but it made you feel even better than them. That's why when somebody gives you a gift, the greatest thing you can do is say, oh, thank you. Not saying you shouldn't have, because the giver gets the most. So by you reaching out and making these phone calls, you're going to feel good about you. And I always say that right now, one of the most important things I believe for all of us is to do things that make us feel good, right? We got to get into a good mental space. It's like I've been, you know, saying that I'm, I'm working out harder right now. I'm in isolation at home and in, I'm in my 11th day. I was obviously traveling before this. I came back from the U.S. and I'm in self-isolation, my wife and I both. 
So I've been working out at least once, sometimes twice a day, about four days a week and work out twice a day. And everybody goes, well, boy, you're going to be in really good shape. But I'm not doing it for that. See, I'm doing it because it's going to give me a mental advantage, isn't it? It's going to make me feel good about me. And the most important feeling you have is the way you feel about yourself now. But you making these calls, imagine how good you're going to feel about yourself. And how the call would go is just, hey, Todd, you know, thanks for answering the phone. I just want to call. I just want to see how you're all doing. What's going on in your world? And Todd's going to tell me, oh, well, I'm working from home. The kids are home. You know, we're trying to manage. We're doing this. We're doing that. And say, I just want to reach out. I want you to know that I'm here to help. And one thing that I'm willing to do, if, if somebody out there, say there's an older person you know of it, maybe they need a prescription filled or uh, somebody's in self-isolation and they need something delivered, I'd be glad to deliver it and leave it outside their home or I can get somebody to do that. Now, all I want to do is whatever I can do to help people in this particular situation. Well, Todd's going to go, man, man, that's amazing, Rich. Good, you know, really good for you. Now, that conversation will probably last three to five. Some people told me we want for 45 minutes, right? They have this great conversation with people. Now, some of these people are going to be up real estate, which is fine. They're going to say, well, what's going on in the market? Are houses closing? Are people still, you know, you go, yeah. And you tell them what's going on, bring them up to date. But what you've done is you've deepened a relationship. You've, you've cemented a relationship. And then when this is all over, it's going to be in a whole different place, isn't it? That relationship, I'll tell you, every time you phone them from that day forward, that relationship is going to be different. Now, I want to give you a few examples of people that have been doing this. So there's Nathan Dart. He's down in Maryland, down in the U.S. Well, in 08, when the financial market took the hit, 08 and 09, Nathan almost went out of business. And the reason he almost went out of business, and this is like a $2 million a year producer, is because what Nathan did wrong is he stopped reaching out. See, he got inside of himself, right? He was so worried about his own problems, he was stuck inside of himself. He was fearful. And I said, what we got to do is we got to get outside of ourselves. See, we got to open up. We got to go out into the world. And we got to try to help. So Nathan said to me when I was talking to him one day, he's one of our great clients. He said, I'm not going to make the same mistake in 2020 that I made in 2008. And he just did a video this morning that he sent to all of our members. And he had made 37 phone calls in one day. And he's committed to doing 15 every single day. And he said, you know, the first two or three were tough. But he said, after that, it was amazing. He goes, my wife had to come and get me from my home office for dinner because I got into it so much. I was having so much fun talking to all these people. So there's one example. You know, we had another great client, Adil Ismail. He's actually with Century 21 in, in Scarborough. And anyway, Adil, you know, is doing the same thing. He sent me this email. He's been a client for like 18 or 19 years. And he sent me this beautiful email. And he said, Rich, he said, I just want to bring you up to speed what I'm doing. I said, what's that? He goes, I'm talking to 10 people every day, every day. He said, if I talk to 10 people every day, he says, when I finish that, I feel like I've done what I could do that day. And then he looks after everything else. And he said, this one lady mentioned that she was out shopping. He was talking to her and she couldn't find chicken. He said, I went to two stores. I couldn't find any chicken. So what did Adil do? Didn't mention to her, but what did he do? He delivered the unexpected. He went out and found some chicken, put it on her doorstep, sent her a text. Cool things that we all can do right now. See, that's not selling, it's helping. And then John Ripko, he's in Calgary. And John's a great guy. And it was interesting, but he's been a client for many, many years. But he said he's always had trouble picking up the phone. And he's got a big team. This guy does a lot of business. And he said, after I did our coaching member webinar, he said, I made 20 calls, 17 people picked up. And this was, this was his email to me. All were uber pleased to hear from me and even more appreciative of receiving a call and offering to get food or medicine and to see how the family is. Isn't that amazing, right? So these are the opportunities, right? And how we can help. One other way you can help is not just the phone calls, but I think the phone calls are the big one. And when I say phone calls, I'm not talking about texting. I'm not talking about emailing right now. I'm talking about picking up the phone, right? And talking to people, right? And jokingly, I'm saying this, but for the millennials, for the millennials out there, I just want you to know, we can talk on this, right? Just so you know, just kidding. Um, or doing FaceTime conversations. But I mean, you're either, you're having voice to voice or face to face conversations, not just texting and emailing. Let's move away from that for a little while, but actually speaking with people. But the other thing that we can actually do as well is we can start putting out great content. So this is also going to be very helpful. So an example of that 
you know, in Ontario yesterday, they said that real estate is an essential service, you know, that lawyers offices are going to stay open. Obviously, the houses can still close. Well, this is the type of stuff we got to start to push out. So where can you push out content? Well, we got Facebook, we got Instagram, right? We got YouTube, you got your people you can email in your database. Right? These are some ways that you all can be pushing out content. And there's many more, but they're just some of the big ones right there. Well, what are you doing right now to let people know every single day what is going on? So you can see up there, right? Interest rate updates. Obviously, interest rates are interesting. The Bank of Canada has gone down, but rates aren't changing that much. And in some cases, maybe even a little bit more, and that's because of risk, okay? But legislation changes. Local businesses change of hours. How can we support businesses right now as well? Right, ideas to entertain the kids at home, free apps and local resources. Right. How to prepare your home to list. So say if you're thinking of listing your home when this is all over, you know, here's a little one sheet and what you can do to get your home ready. You know, different things like that. But now we're posting great content. So if you think about it, it's sort of cool. We're reaching out. We're talking to people, which is wonderful. But then even more important is how can we post great content that is real time that people need to know about right now? This is funny. Give them to me. Come here. Come here. This is, you got to see this, everybody. My dog, <laughs> my wife and I are home. This is my dog, buddy. Hey, buddy. Okay. So anyway, buddy was upstairs with my wife and I think he escaped the bedroom and he was barking a little bit. So my wife came running down and she's been going around here trying to catch buddy. Okay. So we got him. Okay, buds. Say hi to everybody. He's on Instagram. This is buddy, the office Yorkie, right? Here, I'm going to give him to my wife. Hang on. <laughs> you can tell. This is, you know, real at home, right? Anyway, all good. So post great content because when you start posting great content, people are gonna read your content. They're gonna be appreciative of your content. So number one is we wanna be a part of the solution, not the problem. Number two is what we wanna do is stop thinking about selling and start thinking about helping. And I promise you, it's going to pay massive dividends in the future if you have the courage to do that, even with everything that you have going on. And then the third one is this, we need to be strengthening our mindset. Now, the thing is, there's so many ways to strengthen your mindset. You know, we can go on and on. You could be reading, you know, good books. You could be listening to great podcasts. You know, the number one way I think, and again, this is all just my opinion to strengthen your mindset, is you got to get outside of yourself. Get outside of yourself. So we got to focus on helping other people. And fear is a really interesting thing. You know, uncertainty breeds fear. However, fear is 100% self-centered, right? Fear is about self-preservation. Like when I'm afraid, I'm afraid for me. Now you might say, well, no, 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 no. I'm afraid that, you know, somebody, one of my family is going to get sick. I say, no, you're afraid of the way you'll feel if they get sick. I'm not saying you don't care about them, but fear is self-centered. Now, you know, few thousand years ago, a thousand years ago, fear was a good thing because, you know, if a bear starts to chase you, you get scared and you run. You know, if you're walking across the road and a car's coming at you fast, you get a little bit scared, you run. So it's about protecting yourself. But we live in a world today that overall is much safer than it was, you know, if we go back decades. So the problem with fear is that fear is about you. It's about me. When I'm fearful, it's about me. And when I get fearful, what I do is I shut down. So when we get fearful, people stop. You know, they they stop spending money. I better, you know, I better not spend any money because if I spend any money, I might not have enough, right? We start hoarding toilet paper, right? That's a great solution. Let's hoard toilet paper. This is what starts to happen when people get fearful. It's all about self-preservation. They're hoarding. They, they don't care that there's maybe not enough toilet paper to go around as long as I got enough. You see, that's being inside. That's like inside, not getting outside of yourself. So how do we get outside of ourselves? We start reaching out to people. We start posting great content. We get creative in the stuff that we can put out into the world. So that is the number one way to strengthen your mindset. Remember, be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. You know, reach out, start talking to people. You know, be sensitive. Try to feel, be empathetic to what's going on. This will all help you get outside of yourself. Instead of just thinking about you, okay, start thinking about the world. That's why leaders are, when I look at leaders, they're amazing because they have to spend all of their time or most outside of themselves, right? 
not inside. So that's number one. Number two is embrace routine. At a time like this, I think that routine is more important than ever before. Now, my wife and I, we have been in self-isolation for this is our 11th day. We've got a, a grandson that's eight months old, haven't seen him in weeks, can't wait to see him. Um, but what do we do to keep ourselves sane when we're sitting in the house here for you know 14 days up to this Friday? So here's a few things that we have done that have really worked for us. First thing is my wife created a meal plan. So that is a, an actual meal plan <clears throat> and, you know, get up in the morning and we have our protein shake or oatmeal in the morning, but then at 12 o'clock, right, we stop and then we have, that's what we have for lunch every day. And then you can see what we have for dinner every day. So a complete meal plan. Now, what happens when I, we have that type of routine? It gives me what? It gives me certainty, doesn't it? And see, I need some certainty in a world that's uncertain control the controllables. There's many things in the world we can't control, but we control certain things. Well, guess what? Our meal plan is one where we sit down together and we have a little you know, lunch or dinner together every single day. The second is we created a schedule. And this is a rough schedule, not always the same, but again, we created the schedule. And by the way, if you have kids, create a schedule with your kids. You know, so it sort of shows you can see in there that you know, we get up, you know, we, you know, R and R time. That's called review and reflection, meditate, that sort of thing. Um, and I've been meditating every day, which you know has been a great discipline for me. I was very inconsistent before, but I thought right now, for every discipline in my life, I think there's going to be multiple rewards, as Jim Rowan used to say. You know, I've been working out once or twice a day. You know, and then you can see focus. That's when you know we get right at it, and I focus on the hardest work that I have to do that day. You know, lunch. We go for a walk outside. Back in, if we decide to do a second workout, you know, work, you, you know, you just see a schedule, but at least we've got an idea what we're both up to, what our schedules look like every day. So create some routine. And then the third thing I'm going to suggest to you this is to strengthen your mindset. Is there was many times, probably in the last year, the last years where you have said, um, I need to create a listening presentation, but I don't have time, right? I need to create a marketing campaign, but I don't have time. You know, so right now, there's a lot of things that you didn't have time to do that right now you probably have time to do. So imagine this. All of a sudden, you create a project list. Maybe it's project list is cleaning up a room in your house. It doesn't have to be big. Whatever works for you. And don't make it too hard, right? Right now, you don't want to make your life too hard. Um, but say, okay, here's a few things I'm going to get done over the next month, next two months. And maybe you say, okay, the next week, I'm going to redo my listing presentation. Or maybe you're going to take two weeks to do that. It's totally up to you. As I said, don't make it too hard. But all of the things that you haven't had time to do, I bet you you now have time to do. So I think seriously about, you know, what could I get done? So imagine that if now what you do is, you know, you say, okay, my mindset is always I'm going to be a part of the solution, not the problem. Second is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop selling. And that doesn't mean you're not selling. It doesn't mean you're not making money. That's not what I'm saying but I'm going to stop focusing on selling and I'm going to start focusing on helping, right? You can reach out to people on the phone, get a hold of people. You start creating really, really great contents, another really good idea. And then you say, what do I need to do to look after this? Well, guess what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to create a lot of routine in my life. I'm going to make sure that, you know, I know where, what I'm doing, when I'm doing it. Every morning I'm going to wake up, I'm going to create a schedule. I'm going to look at all the projects that I have and say, what can I get done right now that maybe I've been putting off? And then always remember this, is that everything is going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. We just all need to be bigger than the situation. And you are bigger than the situation. You know, I've been in this industry a long time. Um, my first house I bought, rates were 17 and three quarters percent, right? They were trying times. They were, government was giving money away, trying to get people to buy homes. Um, I was in Pittsburgh. 9-11. Tuesday morning, I was speaking at 9 to, 9 to 12. And of course, we know what happened. Um, and this guy walked right down the aisle in front of me. And, and he said to me, he said, you know, the United States was just invaded. Now, I, imagine, I, I don't have a clue what to think. I got 300 people sitting in front of me. You know, I couldn't get out of the U.S. My wife couldn't get a hold of me because phone lines were all clogged up. Crazy times, right? But Everybody said, we're not going to get on a plane. And guess what? Everybody got back on planes. You know, so the same thing. We had the 08 financial crisis. And we can go on and on. We had SARS. So, yes, 
everything is going to be fine. It's difficult right now, but we all need to stand up and be bigger than the situation. But remember this, whatever you focus on is going to get bigger. Whatever you give energy to is going to get bigger. So when you're focusing on what's going wrong in your life, it's going to get bigger. When you're focusing on what is right in your life, it's going to get bigger. You know, so what I'm saying there is be careful. Like if we're going to sit and watch the news all day long, probably not a really good thing. Like the way I've got it set up that I don't even worry about the news. I watch the news one hour a day from six to seven o'clock at night. Other than that, I'm not concerned. I have money in the stock market, like probably many of you do. I don't look at what's going on in the stock market till the end of the day, because whatever happened is going to happen. If I focus on that all day long, right, it's going to get bigger in my mind. It's going to be crazy. I would rather get up. I would rather exercise. I would rather feel good about me. I would rather be proactive. I would rather get some focused work done, make my phone calls in the morning, right? Have a nice lunch, spend some time with my wife, take the dog for a walk, get back to work, right? And then six o'clock, watch the news and drink four or five bottles of wine. Just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, just remember that. We've got to control our focus and you have the choice to control your focus. Like sitting there going down your Facebook feed all day long with some of the stuff being said right now, it's not healthy. It's not mentally healthy. So anyway, I hope this was helpful to you all. I so appreciate the opportunity to be with you. Um, I'm a part of your industry. I get what's happening out there. If there's anything we can do to help, please reach out to us. We'd be glad to help in any way that we possibly can. And I'm gonna turn this back over to Lee and see if you have any questions at all. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Rich. We really appreciate the time that you spent also sharing that quarantine calendar. Uh, pretty good. And I also noticed in some of the comments, people were inspired by your meal plan and uh, the 1905 salad in particular. I don't even know what that is, but I'm intrigued. Um, There's a there's a place in uh, Florida. So we actually have a place, my wife and I have a place down in Florida. And that's where I came from when I went into quarantine here. And there's a restaurant called Columbia's. And Columbia's is a Cuban restaurant that serves this 1905 salad. So if you ever see a Columbia, there's one in the Tampa airport, there's one in Clearwater. You've got to go in and try the 1905 salad. Best salad I've ever had. And my, you can buy the dressing. So we buy the dressing by bottles, six bottles at a time. We have a store here in the house. And my wife makes it once a week. We love it so much. I love it. That's a great idea. We have had a couple of questions uh, dribble in over the course of the last half hour or so. If you do have other questions, please type them in now. I will be posing them to Rich. One of the first questions that came up was, how do you stay positive in your messaging to clients? Because you can't really talk about only real estate right now. And I know you touched on it. Try to be helpful. Any other suggestions on the topics you can talk about with people? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the best thing we all can do is get future focused, right? See, the challenge is anxi anxiety is caused by, by focusing on what you're afraid might happen in the future. But I look at it and say, all I think to myself, even if I'm wrong, I believe everything's going to be okay. You know what I mean? Like, this too will pass. It, it's just my complete attitude towards everything. And so I talk to people about that. And I understand everybody's dealing with their own challenges, but from the deepest part of my being, I know that everything's gonna be okay. So if I believe everything is going to be okay, and that doesn't mean things will get worse before they get better. It does mean I'm not gonna have challenging times. It's not gonna mean everything's gonna you know, work out rosy, but everything will be okay. So if I maintain that attitude that everything comes out of my mouth, right, it's gonna be a representative of what I believe. Our beliefs cause what we're gonna say. So I think we all have to do our very best to take on that belief and then everything will come out better. Thank you. The next one is kind of a tough one. How do you, if you're, you made the recommendation to do virtual open houses, how do you find viewers and buyers for those? Well, the, they, to be honest, the best way to do virtual open houses is on Facebook Live. So here's what some of our clients are doing, or we've made some of the recommendations is, if you go to an open house and let's say you're going to be there from 1 to 145, then what you want to do is you want to announce that. Now, you can announce this by sending an email to your whole database, by the way, that we're going to be doing a virtual open house with all the details in that particular home on Facebook Live at 1 o'clock. 
Then what you do at one o'clock is you, you do a tour of the house. You take them through the house, right? For 10 minutes, roughly 10 minutes. You do a 10 minute tour and then you stop and you take questions on Facebook Live. Because remember the cool thing about Facebook Live or Instagram Live, um, but Facebook Live is they let all of your audience know that you're live. Then you take questions for five minutes and answer questions. Then you do another tour for 10 minutes, answer questions for five. Another tour for 10 minutes, answer questions for five. So you've done three tours of the house. Um, and let's say if you had, you know, six, eight, 10, 12 people on, that's probably as many as you get through an open house. In some cases, you might get many more than that. So Facebook Live is probably the best place to go because it notifies everybody in your Facebook that you're going to be there, but also you should be doing something before to let everybody know you're going to be on Facebook Live. Great advice. And we're going to be getting that tomorrow. We've got some, uh, that's what our topic is tomorrow, some open houses and some Facebook Live stuff. So um, another question, um, inspection clauses with things being shut down, any recommendations around that um, and anything that people should be including in their offers or I know you said perhaps don't or make a conditional offer. Yeah, um, I do think if, if, you know, if people are viewing the house virtually and they do want to make an offer and let's face it with the lack of inventory in some markets, not all markets, that people are like, there's still multiple offers happening in, in some communities, which is pretty amazing. So you, you make a conditional upon going in and having a look at the home. But in terms, uh, each right now, each board is instructing agents to do things differently. So as a company, we don't get too involved in the actual logistics of offers, only because each board quite often, or even province, is making different recommendations. That makes sense. Thank you. We'll again point people to their local boards for those best recommendations. I think that's it. We have had Alex chime in with the 1905 salad recipe and a link to their website for the recipe. Oh. So Richard, thank you very much for your time this morning. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, and hopefully we will be seeing you again. Um, people can also review this on Facebook Live again. So tomorrow we have our Tracy Anderson from Century 21 Canada, who's gonna be talking about these virtual open houses. If your eyes sort of glazed over when you heard about these and you thought, I don't even know how to do it. That's what Tracy's gonna be talking about. We have created some documents step-by-step step, walking you through everything you need to do to have a successful virtual open house and how to do a Facebook Live if you've never done one before, how to practice doing it privately before you make it public. So if this is something you need to start doing, tune in tomorrow. Uh, on Thursday, we are talking about the three things you need to be doing with video in your business right now. And then Friday's topic will be nurturing leads in conditions like this. So thank you, Rich, once again, for kicking us off for this week. We hope to see you all back here tomorrow, same time, same Facebook Live channel. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lee.